Hey, algebra students, I want to look at three volume problems. Now, volume is a concept that I don't cover until unit three. Very few experienced students do three units with me. There's not a reason to. Y'all don't need to spend that much time practicing. And so we are going to look at how to deal with these volume problems using formulas. Formulas are an algebraic method, and we are learning algebra right now. The first example we're going to look at, simple application of the formula. The next two get a little more challenging. Let's compare. First example says, find the volume to the nearest tenth of a cubic inch of a cylinder with a radius of two and a quarter inches and a height of eight and a quarter inches. Well, I know that I have volume formulas on the GED formula sheet. Let's go see if we have the volume of a cylinder. When you look at this formula sheet, the first two sections are area and perimeter. Those are those 2D shapes. But if you keep scrolling under that, you're going to have those three-dimensional solids, as we call them. A cylinder is a 3D shape. It's a three-dimensional solid. That's this section, surface, area, and volume. Now, what you're going to notice is there's the cylinder. There's two formulas. First rookie mistake to avoid is choosing the wrong formula. We were looking for volume. We'll choose the formula with the V, the volume formula. V is equal to pi r squared h. Now I say this is a simpler or more straightforward example because of what we're finding. In this case, they're just telling us to find volume, find the V. And so that's nice and straightforward because it means that I'm finding that letter V that's already by itself. I just have to plug in the numbers on the other side. But here's some important things to know. One is that pi is not a variable. It is a number. It is always the same number. But the problem is it's a long, ugly decimal number. 3.14159, yada, 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 yada. It goes on and on forever. You don't want that many decimals. That's why we call it pi. That being said, though, you can use on the GED the approximation 3.14, and that's even written on your formula sheet at the bottom of that section, the geometry section. But when I see pi, I'll just go ahead and replace it with 3.14. Next thing, R stands for radius, and I know the radius, it's two and a quarter inches. Another reason I wanted to do this example with you is because you are no longer intimidated by fractions. Do you hear me? I am not joking. Do not let it freak you out. You have options. You can write it down, put it in your calculator. You can change it into a decimal. You're in charge now. Fractions don't rule your nightmares anymore. Yeah, I'm going to do for the people who freak out and are like, I don't know how to turn it into a decimal. I think I'll just write down the fraction just as it is, two and one quarter. Put it inside the parentheses with that square on the outside of the parentheses. And now open up another parenthesis. Since H is shoved up against it, it's multiplying to put in that height of eight and a half inches. And I am just going to let the calculator deal with those nasty fractions because I am good at algebra. <laughs> so notice here now, this is a straightforward example, fractions or not, because there's no letters left. I can just type the entire right-hand expression into my calculator. 3.14 times, I want a mixed number part whole number, part fraction. So I need the U and over D key, which is in green. So second, and then I can get U and over D, type in two, arrow around to type the rest of my fraction in, arrow out before I close parentheses and square. Open up another parentheses, and I want another mixed number, eight and a half. Close parentheses, enter, and that whole ugly thing comes to one, three, five, point, yada, 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 yada. You don't have to write all this down because you might've already noticed that there are rounding directions. Look at that. And I would expect rounding directions or multiple choice whenever you have pi involved. So this says find the volume to the nearest tenth. A tenth is one decimal place, which means my number is going to end after one decimal place. And I am going to consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw away to see if it was big enough to matter, that piece I'm throwing away. And it's not. I'm not halfway through my digits yet. I'm not to five. And so I haven't gotten very far away from 135.1. So I'm just going to say, 
Yeah, that's about 135.1. And 135.1, what? Well, this said it was the nearest tenth of a cubic inch I was finding. 135.1 cubic inches. That abbreviation just says cubic inches, guys. It's not math to do that exponent. Okay, so that's a simple application of how we could use a volume formula to find volume. So that's nice. The next one, we're still finding volume, but it's not quite so straightforward. A pyramid has a rectangular base with a width of 1.7 meters and a length of 2.6 meters. Find the volume to the nearest tenth of a cubic meter if the height of the pyramid measures 1.1 meters. So once again, it's volume. And volume of what? Volume of a pyramid. But take a look what your formula sheet has to say about volume of a pyramid. Once again, I'm going to scroll down here to my surface area and volume formulas. There is my pyramid and I'm looking for volume. So I'll pick up the V formula. But what I need you to notice is the capital B. Capital letters signal something in geometry. We're not just like flipping back and forth between little B and capital B because we're inconsistent. They have different meanings. And if you forget, it says it down here at the bottom. That B stands for the area of the base. Area as in the area formulas. So it's like a two-step process to find the volume of this pyramid. First, we find the area of the base, and then we can find the volume of the pyramid. Well, then we got to ask ourselves, well, if I got to find the area of the base, well, what's the base here? You need to know that. Let's take back a look. It says a pyramid has a re rectangular base. So our first step is going to be to find B. That's that area of the rectangle because the base shape is a rectangle. And then we'll be able to use that B to find the volume. I have memorized how to find the area of a rectangle. I know I just multiply together the two dimensions. If you don't have that memorized, that's fine. You can look at your formula sheet and you'll see that the area of a rectangle formula is just says length times width. It says multiply together those two dimensions. So let's do it. The area of the base shape is going to be the length of that rectangle times the width of that rectangle. So in this case, the area of the base shape is... 2.6 times, did I forget a decimal? I did. Watch me, guys. 1.7, meaning it's 4.42 square meters. And now I can use that volume is equal to one third of the base times its height. So V is equal to one third times the area of the base shape, which we said was 14. 0.42 times the height of the pyramid now, and the pyramid's height is 1.1 meters. So let's type in my one third and let's multiply that by 4.42 and then again by 1.1. And I see this ugly thing, the volume is about 1.620, yada, 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 yada. Okay, give me some rounding directions, that's nasty. Find the volume to the nearest tenth again. So one decimal place, consider the next number, the one you're about to throw away. Yeah, no, I wasn't halfway past 1.6 yet. So I'll just still say I'm at 1.6. The volume is about 1.6 cubic meters. Okay, so one trick they can throw at you. They can use the capital B, which means area of the base shape, meaning you have two-step problem. Find the area, use the area to find volume. Find the height to the nearest centimeter of a cone with a radius of 17 centimeters and a volume of 10,900 cubic centimeters. Once again, I'm looking at a volume formula, but this time they're not telling me to find volume. Look at what it says. It says we have a volume of 10,900 cubic centimeters. Guys, the volume is known. We're being asked to find the height that's okay. We don't have to go find some new formula. There's not some height formula. I'm still going to look for the volume of a cone formula, but I'm going to use it differently. So there's my volume section again. There's my cone. V is equal to one third pi r squared h. As always, when I'm using formulas, my first step is a substitution step. If I have any known values, I should plug them in. And there's a lot of stuff I know. I know the volume. And so I won't see V anymore. Instead, in that same place in the equation, I'll see 10,900. You guys are experienced students. 
I'm expecting you to know when you need to plug into the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, of course, my one third won't get dropped, but I am allowed to trade out pi for 3.14 anytime I see it. And so let's see, do I know my, I do, I know my radius this time. It's 17 and that's getting squared. And then that whole thing is being multiplied by H and H is staying H because I don't know it, right? That's what I'm finding. In algebra, when we don't know something, we use a letter. This looks ugly, but it's not nearly as bad as it looks because we can simplify this whole portion. This whole big ugly number is all shoved up against H. It's all multiplying H. Let's just simplify it to figure out what it is and that'll make it way simpler. I'll type in one third times 3.14, close parentheses, open them up to type in the 17, close the parentheses before I square. And this whole thing gets a little simpler, 302 point yada, yada, yada. Now, I'm not gonna write down all those digits on my paper. Frankly, I'm too lazy, but I am gonna keep them in my calculator and you do it too, don't press clear. Let me drop the H, let me drop the equals and the 10,900. Now, H is almost alone. That number and H were shoved together, they're multiplying. So I will do the opposite, I will divide to get rid of it. And again, I'm too lazy to write down the whole number, so are my experienced students. You guys are not trying to do extra work. So if you don't wanna write down the whole number, that's fine. But like I said, we're gonna keep it in our calculator and here's how. We'll do 10,900 and then we're gonna divide by, arrow up to that number, select it by pressing enter and you don't have to type it, they will. Then enter again and I get 36.034 yada, yada, yada. And now that's gonna be approximately equivalent to, approximately, we rounded to H. And now let's see if there's any rounding directions. Okay, it says find the height to the nearest centimeter. Oh, that's not a place value. That's not 10th or 100th or unit or what is it? So if you talk about a centimeter, you're talking about one whole centimeter. So I am saying get rid of the pieces and the parts round at the decimal. But don't just ignore them before you throw them away. Take a look at them. Is the next number, has it pushed me halfway past 36 yet? No, I'm not at five. I'm not halfway. That's only just about 36 as my height. And let's see, 36 what? To the nearest centimeter, 36 centimeters. All right, so we saw a straightforward use of volume formulas where you're just finding the volume. We found a more complex type of volume formula where you have to do two steps. You have to find the area of the base shape before you can find the volume. And now we see another level of complexity here where instead of using the volume formula to find volume, you know the volume and you're using it to find a missing dimension. Three different applications of the same kinds of formulas and you will definitely see one of these. I expect you might see all three of this style with the formulas on the test. I'm super proud of you guys. You're doing good work. Happy learning.